short version of this video, measure the output from your house. I hope you'll stick around. I'll show you how to do it and I'll explain to you why before you purchase that pressure washer. Well, good morning. Welcome back to GP Outdoors. It's summer. It's a beautiful time of the year, but it also comes with chores. And like you, I have literally spent hours going through the myriad of different types and sizes of pressure washers that are available to buy on the market, trying to figure out which one is the right one for me as a consumer. That includes going through a lot of consumer reviews and consumer reports, looking at different brands, different types, different sizes, different outputs, and primarily watching literally dozens and dozens of YouTube videos. There are YouTube videos unboxing videos, review videos, and a whole lot of how-to videos on how to fix, how to start, how to turn it off properly, how to winterize it, and a whole lot of videos on how to repair one or what might be wrong with it if it's not performing properly. But despite spending all that time looking at all those references, I was surprised to find that not a single reference at any point mentioned what I believe to be the most important and critical first step that you need to perform before you open up your wallet and spend that hard earned money on your first or replacement pressure washer. I hope you'll stick around, spend a few minutes with me and hopefully I'll be able to save you a lot of money and a lot of frustration and maybe a poor buying decision. A good quality pressure washer is an excellent tool to have in the workshop or in the garage. Helps out with so many chores, especially those cleaning activities throughout the summer months but there are literally dozens of different pressure washers to choose from at different price points. Unlimited number of brands, manufacturers, sizes. There are consumer grade models, commercial grade models. There's light, medium, heavy duty pressure washers. At the end of the day though, regardless of which one you're looking at at whatever price point, every one of those pressure washers will show you two separate numbers, very important numbers. They're gonna tell you the output of the machine. Regardless of the engine size, regardless of what it looks like, they're always going to tell you those two numbers. They're going to tell you the output in PSI, which is your pounds per square inch, and they're going to give you a GPM number, which is your gallons per minute water flow. Both output numbers. In the case of this Briggs & Stratton, it's got 3,000 PSI, and it does a 2.3 gallon per minute output. Very important key factors, but there's a really important third piece of information that you never see written on that sales description on the website. And I'm going to tell you what it is today and I'm going to show you what you need to do before you finally decide on the pressure washer. Grab yourself a big bucket, a four gallon, grab your smartphone, follow me into the backyard. You need to determine how much pressure actually comes out of the house. Let me explain why it's so critically important. Any of those consumer grade pressure washers that you're looking at or narrowing down to operate at a high level as follows. And I'm going to explain it in my own words or layman's terms because I'm not a mechanic. You'll have an engine. You'll have a pump connected to that engine. You put water into it. When the engine runs, this pump will produce the maximum or the rated GPM and PSI that the unit provides. So using this Briggs & Stratton, it has an output of 3000 PSI and it also pumps out a maximum of 2.3 GPM or gallons per minute. The pump that you'll find on these pressure washers is not usually a variable speed pump. It's what I would call a fixed or a static pump. In other words, from a, the moment you start this engine to the moment you shut it off, this pump does one job consistently. It pumps 2.3 gallons per minute of water to this wand. So when you plug your hose into the outlet, turn the water on full and you start the engine, this pump just starts pumping 2.3 gallons per minute. What buyers tend to overlook is that it expects more than 2.3 gallons per minute coming into the pump in order to maintain that 2.3 out. People don't check the pressure coming out of the spigot on the side of the house before they decide on purchasing the unit. If the water pressure coming out of your house is less than, in this case, 2.3 gallons per minute, your pressure washer is not going to perform. Because remember, the pump is not variable. The pump continues to push out 2.3. And if it's outputting 2.3 gallons per minute, but you're sending in something less than that, what's going to happen is you're going to starve the pump. 
the pump's going to be trying to displace water and the water's not going to be there. If you have a pressure washer and you find that it constantly surges, you get pressure and then it drops and then you get pressure and then it drops and it will eventually within seconds to minutes start to trickle and in some cases just stop pushing water out altogether. It's highly likely that the pressure coming out of your house is far too small to support the output of the pump. Although PSI is also important, PSI is a little harder to calculate if you don't have the right instruments or tools. So a very simple way of doing it, get your bucket, make sure it's a big one, throw your hose in there, use the stopwatch on your smartphone, get ready, and crank your water on full and start the watch. Let it run for one minute, shut off the hose, and then you measure your output. Although there's a lot of chores and cleaning you can do throughout the summer around your home with just a hose and a nozzle, having a good quality pressure washer can make the job a lot easier and in a lot of cases does a much better and more effective job than your hose is going to do. Like cleaning the boat, your tractor and your tractor equipment, getting the filth off that truck, and that brake dust that's deep inside the rim, and the engine, that mildew off your fence those nasty dirt and oil stains that you've got on your garage floor, your driveway or your walkways. The carbon and dirt, including the pollen off of your outside patio furniture, your barbecue or these filthy windows above it, and these bad boys. Not something I like doing with a hose and rubber gloves and a scrubby pad. There's a lot of different uses for a good quality pressure washer. Whoop. Looks like I got some pretty good flow. All right, there we go. It's not scientific, but in my view, it's more than accurate enough for the task at hand. Simply measure how many gallons or how many liters have come out in that one minute, and that'll roughly give you your GPM. So for me, I know I've got just over four gallons per minute coming out of the house. That now informs me to be able to narrow down or eliminate those pressure washers that I can't use. If, for example, I had 1.5 gallons per minute coming from the house, I know that that 1.5 gallons is definitely not going to support a machine that has a pump that outputs 2.3 GPM. Last step you want to do just before you pull the trigger, try to find the manual online. And if you can't find it online before you purchase it, ask the retailer to see the manual. Any unit you buy will have a specification sheet in the back, and within those specifications, you guessed it, you're going to see the minimum water supply flow rate required for that machine to perform. You've measured yours. If you're within a tolerance, you should be okay. I hope you found the video helpful today, and good luck in your purchase decision. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button, and if you want to know when I'm posting videos, just click that little bell. Looks like I have a lot of chores to catch up on. Have a wonderful week with your families. Please be kind to one another. And I'll see you again right here on GP Outdoors. Cheers.